It's August 1st, 2012. It's Paul Joseph Watson, and this is InfoWars Nightly News. Coming up on the show tonight. Tonight, Iran says expect war within weeks as the Iranian War Council prepares for retaliation against what they expect will be a major conflict with the United States. Then, busted. A Photoshop forgery is used to sell the war on Syria. Plus, ABC's new drama demonizes militias. And NATO says we need to attack Syria to fight Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda, that is. And finally, author and investigative journalist Dave Krieger joins us in studio to expose the mortgage scandal created by big banks. All that and more up next on the InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight. Coney 2012 style PR stunt to sell war on Syria. A mercenary who was previously embedded with US troops and also fought with Libyan rebels is set to produce a documentary film in an effort to propagandize for the invasion of Syria, drawing his inspiration from Coney 2012, the infamous viral video that drew widespread criticism for its role in using manipulative techniques to grease the skids for US military intervention in Africa. And this is on Infowars.com today. So we have our next potential, Jason Russell. You know, he of Coney 2012, naked mania meltdown fame, set to launch this new public relations hoax to convince the world of the sanctity of the glorious Al-Qaeda-backed Syrian rebels, half of which aren't even Syrian. And he goes by the name of Matthew Van Dyke. He's a 33-year-old American filmmaker who was embedded with the US military in Iraq and also fought on the same side as Libyan rebels, who of course themselves were commanded by Al-Qaeda-affiliated forces in the guise of the LIFG. So, you know, he, he was actually also imprisoned by Gaddafi for six months during that conflict, but he did such a fantastic job of helping to bring freedom to Libya, where out-of-control sectarian thugs now roam around imprisoning, torturing, and killing black Libyans in their thousands, you know, where the Al-Qaeda flag flies high over Libyan courthouses. But he's now keen, this filmmaker, on giving Syria a dose of the same medicine. And he's actually out asking for donations. He wants to make anything up to $100,000 to create this documentary film that will generate, quote, in his words, a public relations campaign, end quote, to sell global opinion on the need to basically increase support for the Al-Qaeda-backed Libyan rebels in overthrowing Assad and greasing the skids for this NATO military intervention. And in his press release, Van Dyke actually mentions by name Coney 2012, says it's basically the template and that he wants to use the same techniques and promotional methods to sell his film about the sanctity of the glorious Syrian rebels. The problem with that, of course, is, as we documented at the time, back at the start of this year, Coney 2012 was widely derided and debunked because it was basically a PR stunt. It used emotionally manipulative techniques, dumbed-down propaganda, to whip up public support for further US military intervention in Africa. It was a trick, it was a stunt, and it was uh, generously supported by all the trendies on Facebook and Twitter, which is why it went mega viral, you know, over 70 million views on YouTube. But when they actually showed Kony 2012 to Ugandans, you know, the supposed victims of Joseph Kony, despite the fact that Coney hadn't been in the country for six years, didn't mention that in the film, kept that quiet. The, re the reaction from the Ugandans, they rioted and started throwing rocks at the cinema projection screen. So even the very people that it was supposedly aimed at helping in Uganda could see right through it as a propaganda stunt. And of course, you had the infamous mental breakdown of the director, Russell himself, you know, his infamous naked drug-fueled mania. 
And now we've got a, a template of that for Syria with this Van Dyke character who says he's going to do the same thing. $100,000 to create a viral propaganda film to sell the NATO war on Syria. And what's he trying to accomplish? Well, he tells us in his own press release, he plans to portray the Syrian rebels as, quote, in a very human, moving and distinctive way. Now, that's despite the fact that the Syrian rebels and their al-Qaeda commanders with NATO there and special forces on the ground have been caught in massacres, bombings, and just over the past couple of days, summary executions of captured prisoners. So they're the people who he wants to portray in a human, loving, moving way with this Coney 2012-style propaganda film. So, you know, as the, as the world begins to see the true face of the Syrian rebels and their al-CIA backers, Get ready for another Coney 2012 style public relations stunt to characterize the rebels as angelic democratic freedom fighters when, of course, as we know, they're nothing of the sort. And sticking with Syria now, new spin attacks Syria to fight Al Qaeda. This is also Infowars.com. We are now clearly entering a new phase in the propaganda war with regard to Syria heralded by the NATO aligned establishment, now using the presence of Al-Qaeda fighters in the country, many of whom were airlifted into Syria by NATO powers as a justification to launch a wider military assault. And this story concerns a RAND Corporation report, which was published recently, also appeared in the Wall Street Journal, and it actually cites the presence of Al-Qaeda fighters in Syria as a justification for US military intervention. Of course, the thing that it doesn't mention is the fact that those same Al-Qaeda members who helped NATO overthrow Gaddafi in Libya were airlifted from Libya into Syria by NATO powers. And in fact, now there's even more documentation about how all these Libyan mercenaries are coming into Aleppo to help the so-called Syrian rebels in that fight. So this is all documented that NATO powers under the guise of the puppet transitional Libyan government got all these fighters that helped them kill and overthrow Gaddafi, transport them into Syria. And of course, they were all under the banner of the LIFG and its offshoots, which is Al-Qaeda. They were the second biggest contingent in Iraq killing US troops. So now they're saying they've gone beyond denying that Al-Qaeda's, you know, merely running the rebels in Syria. They're openly admitting it, but now using their presence as a reason for intervention, even though they put them there in the first place. And this RAN report goes on to claim that, you know, the peaceful democratic rebels, the grassroots rebels in Syria, denounce the Al-Qaeda presence among them, and they want nothing to do with them. But then you read a Guardian article, which has been doing the rounds big style in the past couple of days, because it's, it's quite a glowing report about how Al-Qaeda is now running the insurgency in Syria. You know, remember, Al-Qaeda are now the good guys. Oceania was never at war with Eurasia. Al-Qaeda terrorism in Syria is good terrorism. Anywhere else, it's bad terrorism. If it's in Syria, it's good. So now the Guardian admits that far from the FSA and Al-Qaeda being opposite forces, far from Al-Qaeda merely hijacking the trouble, Al-Qaeda is directing the FSA rebels. Here's a quote from an Al-Qaeda fighter in Syria. Quote, we have clear instructions from our Al-Qaeda leadership that if the FSA need our help, we should give it. We help them with IEDs and car bombs. These are the democratic freedom fighters. Our main talent is in the bombing operations, said former FSA rebel turned Al-Qaeda commander Abu Kuda, adding that Al-Qaeda fighters meet, quote, every day with Syrian rebels. So they meet with Syrian rebels every day, teach them how to make bombs, then you see the attacks on government buildings, the assassinations of political leaders in Syria. But no, Syria and al-Qaeda, they're not working together because they need to prolong that myth to use the presence of al-Qaeda in Syria as a reason to invade. So while they're denying it, <laughs> the very FSA rebel turned al-Qaeda commander in Syria admits they meet every day and they make bombs with each other. So... I mean, add to it, you know, Ambassador Susan Rice, remember her quote after one of the attacks on the government building in Damascus. She threatened Assad with more terror attacks in, unless he stepped down. And then a couple of weeks ago, when the top Syrian officials were assassinated, 
um, the White House came out and lauded the fact that they were assassinated. They didn't say this is an act of terrorism, we shouldn't commend it. They lauded the fact. So Al-Qaeda carrying out bombings applauded by the White House, Al-Qaeda teaching Syrian rebels how to make bombs, IEDs, but we need to invade Syria because of Al-Qaeda. Doesn't seem to make sense, does it? It's like, you know, they gave Saddam the WMDs, which he used, and then said, oh, by the way, we need to invade Iraq because Saddam's got WMDs. Of course, the only difference is that unlike WMDs in Iraq, there really are Al-Qaeda fighters in Syria, and they're running the show. They're training the rebels how to make bombs. But the rebels are great. Al-Qaeda's still bad. Uh, unless they carry out bombings, then, then they're good because it helps NATO. But we need to invade Syria because of Al-Qaeda. There you go. That's the level of the propaganda that we've reached now.